Welcome, I'm Anna Joy, the Director of the Humanitarian Centre. This event is about bringing together academics and researchers, NGOs, private sector, students, all working together, sharing their expertise, so that ultimately people are working more effectively with partners and communities in the Global South, in developing countries, and people's lives are changed because their access to healthcare is improved. It's called a Global Health Hack Day, but it's actually a week. Today is the day when uh, 30 students come together, they are presented with seven challenges, they then work with people from those organisations, both private sector companies and NGOs, who mentor them, explain more, explain the details, set the task. The students then go away for a week and work together and then next Saturday we'll have an evening reception where there'll be a much wider audience who will hear both the challenges that they've been set and their solutions. Enjoy, uh, get to know each other and uh, we can't wait to see what the outcomes are going to be. In the developing world in particular there are a lot of areas that we hope innovation can have an impact on. Um, so from a QTEC standpoint we hope that some of these challenges um, will either result in solutions for the various NGOs that are taking part, or they'll stimulate the participants or even um, people who've been watching to go and do something new uh, and to really drive something new forward that can help mankind. Two brand new incubators sitting in a room underneath a pile of expired medicines and other broken equipment because there isn't anybody around who's got the capacity or the training to install and commission them. This is a very, very common scene in low resource settings throughout the world. I work for Health Partners International. Uh, we do health system strengthening in developing countries. Uh, we have a specialism in healthcare technology management and the challenge today for the people here is to help us to use the resources that we have better uh, to make them more accessible to the people who need to use them and to enable the people who do use them to manage better with what they've got. HoverAid use Hovercraft to reach the unreachable. Uh, hovercraft can get to places where no other vehicle can get to, pretty much. So what we do is get to those places. Uh, the challenge that we're setting today or, is to develop a framework or a way of assessing more places a hovercraft can get to. We know places we can get to and we know ways of doing it. But we're looking at a, to find an easier way of assessing everywhere so that we don't overlook people and regions just because we don't know about them or we haven't got enough data on them. Now, the PhD Foundation are an international, um, independent, not-for-profit, UK-based health charity um, with the idea that trying to make science work for health. We have developed a toolkit, a uh, framework and toolkit for con conducting a health needs assessment for birth defects. And uh, the challenge is to try and maximise its uptake in India and how we go about this as a UK-based uh, charity. I mean, I have two children and... the you know, the impact that I can have on their lives is huge. Um, but here we're talking about six million uh, children that are born with um, a birth defect that is preventable, treatable, or, or can be cured. Um, you know, and if we start to think that having an impact on one child's life is huge, imagine doing that six million times. If we can start to treat these children, if we can care for them, um, if we can alter services so that where, where these conditions are preventable through folic acid supplementation and fortification of foods, for example, um, you know, we, we can have a, a massive impact. U universal access, um, private and secure. Patients Know Best is um, a portal for a patient to um, download their medical records. Patients Know Best's challenge today was um, looking at um, South Africa. 25% of the market there is internet connected, which is not very good because we're an internet company. And, um, but that um, 75 to 100% are mobile literate. And our challenge was to look at the pros and cons of transforming patients know best from an internet based to a mobile based. Something like a mobile device could save lives, millions of lives, and it's really worth it. It's really great being part of this. There's lots of people here with loads of great ideas, loads of great initiatives. I learned a lot about other things that are going on in, in the area. Uh, and so you should get a lot more knowledge. And also people come up to me and said, I've never heard of Hover Aid before. So it's quite good to, to kind of enable other people to hear about us as well. So it's kind of sharing and, and gaining knowledge from everybody in the room, really. Oh, it's 
really, really um, lovely to see all sorts of different people thinking about how to solve um, you know, worldwide problems. It's very, very interactive and very exciting. Uh, my name is Isaac Holman. I'm the Chief Strategist of Medic Mobile, and I'm very happy to be joining you today. Our mentor Isaac is terrific, a really passionate guy, but we had an additional challenge on our team because he's based in California. Um, so he's far away, he had to get up very early in the morning for him for our first brainstorming session. And uh, so it definitely made it a bit of a challenge, but I suppose it was appropriate because we were working on mobile health technology, so a little bit of interconnectedness through Skype and other technology was, was set the scene really well. So I co-founded Medic Mobile about three years ago with the idea that we could use communication technologies to improve the health of underserved and disconnected communities. So the challenge we were given was find a way to uniquely identify patients um, using the SIM card technology that Medic Mobile uses in their projects. Medic Mobile is a company that, work, that works on using essentially communication software to improve the delivery of health in remote and disconnected areas. One of the really exciting applications that's coming out of that is what's called mobile healthcare or mHealth, where with sort of massive mobile penetration in the developing world, you can actually leverage these mobile phones to deliver and support healthcare services. Training. If they go to one of our link places, either Botswana or El Salvador, um, I work for Addenbrooke's Abroad, um, and the challenge that we've set the students is to look at innovative ways of assessing the impact of Addenbrooke's Abroad activities on healthcare workers, patients, and health institutions at home and abroad, and look at effective ways of disseminating this. Or to have guidance and constraint and limitations so that the focus of brainstorming shifts from trying to interpret Adam Brooks' broad objectives to... The students have um, jumped right into the, the challenge there. They're beavering away quite busily, coming up with uh, lots of ideas, lots of areas that I haven't thought of before, um, and I'm really, really looking forward to the outcome. I thought the, the brainstorming was really good. Um, it brings together different people with different expertise, um, you know, from different areas, you know, we all coming from different places, um, you know, trying to look at a common, a common theme, a common challenge here. Um, so it's just putting different ideas into the mix and sort of bouncing those ideas off, off each other. Um, so I thought, thought, thought the process worked well. I think like, it's, it's definitely just an avenue. might not be the route you go down. But it's not like ruining it now. We've actually come up with some really good ideas. We've discussed kind of a lot of what we've already done and kind of what they could do, and uh, some silly ideas and some new ideas, and kind of, yeah, I, I think it's going to come up with something really, really interesting and something exciting that's going to happen at the end, and hopefully something you can actually use because they're, they're very screwed on people. <laughs> I think it was good. I think there were lots of um, ideas that we would definitely never have come up yeah. with, being a bit stuck in our ways. Um, and we've yeah. given, yeah, we've given them a few ideas to go away with, and and they're really enthusiastic. Brainstorming was exhausting. <laughs> we've had lots of lists of you know pros and cons, um, and um, we were hitting lots of cons, and um, so it's it's about actually really really you know getting together again, I think, and. Um, sort of looking at the um, issue much more closely. The idea is that the team now go away, um, bounce ideas off themselves, do a little bit of background research, use their own individual expertise um, to, you know, and ideas to, to meet this challenge. They then come back to um, us as mentors um, on Wednesday and um, we then sort of create a final idea, what we're going to take forward and sort of start to put together a presentation for, uh, for the, sort of this time next week. Welcome to this really exciting prize giving reception. We're really excited because the teams that have been working during the week on these global health challenges are about to present. They've each just got five minutes, very strict five minutes. They're going to present to a panel of four judges and the winning team will get a prize. Some of these challenges are actually very complicated and to get the message and ideas across inside that time frame is actually quite a tricky thing to do. It takes quite a lot of skill. We have uh, Costello Medical Consulting. I feel a bit nervous because I'm the one who has to present it. So I hope I can manage to do it in the short time we, we were given. And our idea is that the intern goes back and builds up something to, in order to educate the people about the sickness so that this uh, does not happen like that. Like there will be some psychosocial training 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah to go to the communities. And today I'm going to introduce you to the uh, solutions that we have found for the challenges that uh, Health Partners International are facing. To, when we looked at it and we spoke with our mentor, the first thing we asked her was actually who is the target audience for this? Most of these suggestions are very low cost. I mean, for example, putting a link on a resources tab on an existing website, I'm sure we can manage that for free. For those remote communities that aren't easily accessible uh, by traditional means, uh, basically the services that can be provided to reach these people uh, that would otherwise not be reached uh, would be immense on impacts. That's the first step. Definitely you go there and you learn as you go. Thank you. I've been thinking about that every single second of this week. So it's really, really cool. I really enjoy that. The challenge given to us by Medic Mobile was to identify an approach for improving the accuracy or efficiency of patient ID capture that is most importantly feasible with the constraints of SIM card applications. So going up there to do the presentation, I personally found terrifying. Um, I always get nervous in front of crowds, uh, especially seeing how good some of the other presentations were. I was nervous, very nervous going up. But um, it felt good. We had rehearsed really hard, we had practiced a lot, and we believed in our idea. So I hope that came through in the final presentation. First, you need a mobile phone with a SIM card. So our solution is to use fingerprint scanners in conjunction with mobile phones as a way to uniquely identify patients in the field in remote and rural areas. The advantages of doing this is that it means that a single biometric scan can identify a person, pull out their health records from previous visits, ensure better continuity of care. You can potentially scan someone's fingerprints, send it via mobile phone, and then get an SMS 30 seconds later saying this child needs a second round of diphtheria vaccinations. That can improve vaccines, reduce wastage, and potentially save lives. A big round of applause for all of the participants so far. Thank you. It's been brilliant. We're all really, really pleased with it because what's interesting is just getting these students from different sectors, different, they're studying different things, coming together. They have really produced interesting, innovative ideas. When you see all the networking, you see a lot of excitement, a lot of discussion about the ideas, and you can see all these debates going on afterwards, people connecting, and people kind of thinking of collaborations, how they can move it forward. And that's really what our events are for, is connecting people um, showing people that they can move their ideas forward um, if you know the right people. And so tonight it was nice to see people chatting about their ideas and there's obviously a lot of business card swapping so you can see it's, it's going to be built on um, in the future. The winner for um, the Innovation Week for Global Hack Day, Health Hack Day Challenge is the Medic Mobile team. <laughs> Um, I felt really excited, maybe a little bit surprised. Um, all some of the teams looked really good out there, so I think we were very lucky to get it. But uh, yeah, thrilled, really, really thrilled. Feeling really, really glad. Uh, it was an exciting challenge. It's good to be rewarded with. The, it's yeah, we're delighted. Our hope is that by bringing together people from different disciplines, we can find new ways to tackle some of the healthcare issues facing the world's most disadvantaged people. What we want is for there to be impact. So each of the challenges was real, and each of them was about people's lives and people's health. And if they're impacted by this challenge, then we will be very pleased. <laughs> Please give a last round of applause for the judges, the sponsors, and all of you guys. Thank you. I don't think I sack notes. Uh, well, uh, yeah, we should we should let them know. <laughs>